Okay, we're on chapter three of Stone Fox, and chapter three is called Searchlight. So go ahead and turn to chapter three. In my book, it's page 22, but it might be a little bit different in your book. Chapter three, Searchlight. It's easy to tell when it's winter in Wyoming. There's snow on everything. The trees, the houses, the roads, the fields, and even the people, if they stay outside long enough. It's not a dirty snow. It's a clean, soft snow that rests like a blanket over the entire state. The air is clean and crisp, and the rivers are all frozen. It's fun to be outdoors and see the snowflakes float down past the brim of your hat and hear the squeak of the fresh powder under your boots. Winter in Wyoming can be the most beautiful time of the year, if you're ready for it. Little Willie was ready. He had chopped enough wood. They would not be cold. He had stocked enough food. They would not go hungry. He had asked Lester at the general store how much food grandfather had bought last year. Then he purchased the same amount. This would be more than enough because grandfather wasn't eating very much these days. So all the stuff that grandfather usually did, little Willie was now doing because grandfather wasn't getting out of bed, he wasn't giving him advice, he wasn't doing anything but laying in bed. So, and in those days, you had to get ready for the winter. So little Willie chopped wood, so they would have wood for their fireplace to keep warm. He bought food so they would have enough food to eat so they wouldn't be starving. And we'll keep on reading now. The coming of snow as early as October also means the coming of school. But little Willie didn't mind. He liked school. However, his teacher, Miss Williams, had told Grandfather once, far as I'm concerned, that boy of yours just asked too many questions. Grandfather just laughed and said, how is he going to learn if he don't ask? Then later, Grandfather had said to little Willie, if your teacher don't know, you ask me. If I don't know, you ask the library. If the library don't know, then you really got yourself a good question. So the teacher said that Willie asked too many questions, but Grandfather was like, it's good to ask questions. Ask questions, and I'll help you, or if I can't help you, the library will help you. We'll continue on. Grandfather had taught little Willie a lot, but now little Willie was on his own. Each morning he would get up and make a fire. Then he would make oatmeal mush for breakfast. He ate it. Searchlight ate it. Grandfather ate it. He would feed grandfather a spoonful at a time. See, in those days they didn't have dog food. You just fed Dogs, whatever people didn't eat, extra food or leftover food. And so, and of course, grandfather used to make breakfast, but now little Willie has to make breakfast. We'll continue on. After breakfast, little Willie would hitch up searchlight to the sled. It was an old wooden sled that grandfather had bought from the Indians. It was so light that little Willie could pick it up with one hand but it was strong and sturdy. Little Willie rode on the sled standing up and searchlight would pull him five miles across the snow-covered countryside to the schoolhouse, which was located in the outskirts of town. So when he went to school, searchlight would pull the sled and it was five miles to school. Searchlight loved the snow. She would wait patiently outside the schoolhouse all day long, and little Willie never missed a chance to run out between classes 
and play with his friend. So while little Willie was at school, Searchlight waited outside the schoolhouse, and when Willie had a chance to run out between classes and play with Searchlight, he would. In those days, school wasn't like school that we have now. It was a little bit different, a little bit looser, so dogs could kind of hang around the schoolhouse, and it was okay. We'll continue. After school, they would go into the town of Jackson and run errands. They would pick up supplies at Lester's General Store, or go to the post office, or go to the bank. <clears throat> Little Willie had $50 in a savings account at the bank. Every month, Grandfather had deposited the money Little Willie had earned working on the farm. Don't thank me, Grandfather would say. You earned it. You're a good little worker, and I'm proud of you. Grandfather wanted little Willie to go to college and become educated. All little Willie wanted to do was grow potatoes, but he respected his grandfather enough to do whatever he said. If there were no errands to run that day, Searchlight would just pull little Willie up and down Main Street. Little Willie loved to look at all the people, especially the city slickers, as Grandfather called them. Why, they didn't know a potato from a peanut, Grandfather said, and their hands were as pink and soft as a baby's. You couldn't miss the city slickers. They were the ones who looked as if they were going to a wedding. So, Grandfather and Willie kind of made fun of the city slickers, the people that didn't work on a farm, always wore fancy clothes, had nice soft hands, never used their hands for real work. We'll continue. At a little before six each day, so every evening at six, little Willie would position his sled in front of the old church on Main Street. Today, again, he waited eyes glued on the big church clock that loomed high overhead. Searchlight waited too, ears perked up, eyes alert, legs slightly bent, ready to spring forward. Bong! At the first stroke of six, Searchlight lunged forward with such force that little Willie was almost thrown from the sled. Straight down Main Street they went, the sled's runners barely touching the snow. They were one big blur as they turned right onto North Road, and they were almost out of town before the church clock became silent again. Go, searchlight, go! Little Willie's voice sang out across the snowy twilight. And did searchlight go? She had run this race a hundred times before. And she knew the whereabouts of every fallen tree and hidden gully. This enabled her to travel at tremendous speed, even though it was getting dark and more dangerous. So every day they would run the same race. And Searchlight knew all the trees, all the bumps and everything, so she could run very fast. Little Willie sucked in the cool night air and felt the sting of the wind against his face. It was a race, all right. A race against time. A race against themselves. A race they always won. So Searchlight and Willie weren't running against anybody. Nobody else was in the race. They just had fun seeing how fast they could go. The small building up ahead was Grandfather's farmhouse. When Searchlight saw it, she seemed to gather up every ounce of her remaining strength. She forged ahead with such speed that the sled seemed to lift up off the ground and fly. And that's what racers a lot of times will do. When they see the finish line, they go as fast as they can. They, they use up the rest of their energy. And so that's what Searchlight would do. She would see the farmhouse and she'd be like, 
that's home. And then she'd run faster, faster, as fast as she could. They were so exhausted when they arrived at the house that neither of them noticed the horse tied up outside. Little Willie unhitched searchlight and then both of them tumbled over onto their backs in the snow and stared up at the moon. Searchlight had her head and one paw on Little Willie's chest and was licking the underside of his chin. Little Willie had a hold of Searchlight's ear and he was grinning. The owner of the horse stood on the front porch and watched them, tapping his foot impatiently. So they have a visitor, Willie and the searchlight and grandfather have a visitor at the house. Um, I get the idea that it is not someone they know because if it was someone they knew, they would say, hey, little Willie, hey, searchlight. But they didn't. They're just tapping their foot on the porch, impatient, waiting, waiting, waiting. So we're going to find out in the next chapter who that person is. And that's the end of chapter three.